is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show in um, the land of no sleep. That's what I'm going to call this week. <laughs> so I hope you guys are uh, doing okay this morning. Um, I was on Tom's show yesterday afternoon, and we were you know, talking about at one point, you know, kind of these indexes chasing each other, so to speak. And, and you know, that's basically what's happened here. We got a little bit of a relief valve in, in, uh, in China, about a 5% move up on that index. And, you know, 5% move now isn't a lot of points relative to what a 5% move in the Shanghai was, what, last week or the week before. So, uh, you know, and the theory is really, you know, we talked about this kind of forming a little bit of a flag pennant type thing and consolidating on the downside. But we said, you know what, with the move like, you know, what happened yesterday afternoon, and that was – just to, I mean, I, just to put this in perspective, uh, from the lows, we were at like 1875. This is our 240. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we moved up in, and let me just put this on a 60-minute bar. I know you guys know this. You're like, okay, thank you, Captain Obvious. But let me just talk about this for a second. Reached a high of 1940 in 1875, 1940. Uh, do the math there. 60, 70 points in, what was that, three hours in the S&Ps intraday in the afternoon. That's pretty pretty vicious, I'll say that. So, again, we blew through some of the numbers, and, and you know, what we talked about yesterday morning was getting down back down below this 1910, 1900 area, and that was a nice little trade for a while. And there's uh, that night. There's some of the numbers we talked about yesterday. Let me, I'm sorry, let me pull up our 60. This is kind of what we were focusing on. There's the nine, there's the 1900. Um, and when we blew back above there, then you kind of had to just sit tight and see if we could get, you know, back down below, below that level. We've been opting out on some longs um, all along the way. So here's the situation now. We've got a new profile that's appeared this morning, and you got to put stops in, guys. I mean, I've, I don't, I'm not just, sloughing this off lightly when I talk about, okay, and then this happened and, you know, everything seemingly has worked out. I mean, you, you're going to have to take some heat and hit stops are going to get hit every once in a while. And when you look at this, there's that 1909 and there's the 1900 on the 60 that we were focused on that, that DMZ. And we caught some pretty decent little moves down through that area in the first part of the day. But when we reverse, You've got to have some money management rules in place. You know, you, one of the things we teach a prop trader is don't let a winning day turn into a losing day. And I go, you know, when do you, when do you define what a winning day is? It's not, you know, when you're one penny in the in the green. It's, you know, whatever you know, whatever you set as the goal is what you declare as a winning day. Now, when that is achieved, you know, you don't want to allow that to turn into a losing day if you're day trading if you're investing this is a whole different conversation um but as a good you know guideline that's what we tell people it, because what it does is not only does it just turn you into a, a, a not a profitable day it also does a little bit of mental damage um because you've you've got a victory it's almost like what, what is that saying uh you grabbed victory from the jaws of defeat and and this time it will be you grab defeat from the jaws of victory i mean that's actually very bad so when you achieve your goals and then you want to set a stop on you know what you're going to allow yourself to play around with as the free part of that profit day free part of the profit dollars that you have that's where you got to say you know what it's over i'm going to go walk away 
because I've had a winning day. I got to be happy with that. And the only reason I'm sitting in front of the screen now is because I'm a full blown junkie. All right. You want to get away from that attitude. So we caught a pretty good morning. You might have got stopped out. You might have got stopped out right above that area um, if you took that attitude, or you may have gone long. But um, again, you know, we're looking for areas of resistance still to pick battles. And that 1945, 1948 on the close gave us a couple of points, but we talk about also not being in the market overnight. So again, as you can see by the profiles, we got into that, mm, what is that, 1048.50? That's on the scanner, and we reached an out of 1049.75. So we backed off pretty well off of that. Actually came back 15 S&Ps off of that as soon as we hit it yesterday, pretty much. Um, so, again, you know, these inflection points are, are areas to be patient to pick battles. And I'm going to pull up our scanner in just a second. And I should have had that up, but I don't. Let me start it. It takes two seconds. You know, we also talked about specifically on the show, you know, again, broken record time here. What instruments are showing their hand relative within these indices relative to what these broad moves are doing now? And again, we're continuing to look on the short side. And uh, yesterday we went into the ETF grid. If you guys weren't watching the show, we you know, kind of wanted to look at, you know, what's really on the seller still, even on a 60 minute breath situation the xlb uh, is one we kind of focused on and these are the ones that you know even though the etf and i'm gonna go back to the etf and show you something these arrows show intraday whether the whether the etf is positive or negative that's just a little extra piece of information the grid itself being red means that on a 60 minute breath situation as you can see these odometers this is the worst breadth out there, and that breadth is comprised of what the internals are do, rel doing relative to our so-called profiles and our automatic algorithm that ranks those profiles and where they're supposed to be. So what we did is we picked the, the weakest thing that we could find after we still look at the tide of the marketplace over, overall. I'm going to show that right now. This is starting to get a little positive here, obviously, on the 60-minute. We got a 70-point you know, rally yesterday afternoon, and then we got a... What do we have this morning? A gap up of 20? Is that where we're at? Um, but again, these indices chasing themselves, you're going to, you know, these, you know, we talked about being prepared for something like this. And again, not being in the trade overnight. You know, the U.S. big rally. Oh, Shanghai. Oh, wow. U.S. is feeling better. Uh, let's bump up ourselves anyway. And then the U.S. forecasting that maybe the Shanghai was oversold. And then the U.S. is seeing that going, oh, God, yes, okay, the, the sky's not falling anymore. And, uh, you know, just as a little bit of a sympathy move up, I'm not expecting this arbitrage to reality that's been going on in the prices to stop. We're obviously going to have some volatile days. We've talked about that. We've talked about being patient, waiting for the inflection points to be hit on these indices. But at this moment, at this time in the show, we're talking about stocks showing their hand to maybe get even a better edge on trying to make sense and pick up some extra points. So as I drilled down to the XLB, we looked at uh, international paper. We looked at a couple of other ones. Um, Freeport, McNamara, and uh, Monsanto looked at yesterday. Um, and I'm going to do some custom sorts this morning when we come back from the first break to kind of show you how to find some of these opportunities. Um, let's see, I want to just do that. And then we're going to kind of look for inflection points. We're going to look at stocks that never really got out of their own way on a 60 minute yesterday afternoon. And we will probably have some stocks opening to clarify this a little bit better in just a little while, but uh, that we will get into. So now, you know, the market, this is the S and P's again, we've come back into this morning. We've reached a low of, 1050, that inflection point rounded off is at 1049 rounded off. So we've come very close and we're using that as a little bit of a fence now. So for you guys who want to be short, um, you're going to have to get back down below there, in my opinion. If that just continues to rattle around above there, um, you're going to have to take that for what it's worth. Here's the 1049.52 or 1049.50 also sitting at our 60 minute. Remember, we don't have a lot to go on on our long term right now, except for a profile that's appeared well above. That's extremely bearish, by the way. All right. On the long term, the intermediate and long term. 
Nothing appearing here on the weekly. And let me go to my correct clock here. I don't know, Tommy, if you're listening. I had the wrong clock up. Sorry about that. And my communication on Yahoo, just to clarify this, is is zero. I can't figure out how to get get that working. Um, so, uh, so going back to the S and P's, you got this 1048.50 sitting here. You got the 1049.50 sitting on the 60 minute. If we can breach that area, then I'm going to feel much better about going short. And right now, you know, and again, there's that 60 minute. There's the peel back. I'm just giving some, you know, you guys some things to be aware of when you look at this scanner. I'm going to go back to my futures area. We're going to pick some stocks later, but I'm going to go right into my S&P mini. That's kind of where we're sitting. We're in the middle of a profile in the 60, obviously above the profile right there on the 240, but the two long terms are are having problems so there's that 4950 there's the 4850 uh and what we're looking at is if we can break through clear the 60 get back in the 240 i think we got some you know chances to to use that as stops above um and again i mean you know the sky is not falling so to speak today right at this minute but uh you know the problems are still there, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some opportunities to short this thing higher sometimes, and uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. So if you we're looking at the scanner as a 60 minute barometer trade on the short term, by the way, when we see that orange bar appearing, that's indication next bar we're gonna have a new profile. That's a you know to kind of a similar somewhat of a at least a target situation, if not an indicator in itself. So just pointing that out how that works, and. Uh, Those are the numbers on the S&P. All right, so let's take a look at the euro. This is one, man, I just, God, I'm just so, I was so happy to see this thing get back down below that 114.67 area. You know, this blip up, Joey and I were talking about the other day. It was like, you know, who cares? This is in a hole up here. We could go as high as 125 and a half if that's the case. Then you short it up there, but you don't play around with this in between. You wait for it to get below 114.67, and that's what it did. And that's what, what that was okay to kind of lay the wood uh, to the short side. Somebody seemed to like that phrase the other day. Um, but that's kind of what we're looking at here with the with the euro now. And um, again, it was just an anomaly. I don't know why people were thinking that was the safety trade. It was almost like a free look. And I love this reversal. God, I love it. Mm. So stops above 114.67 on the long term on the euro now. And uh, as I hear the music, we will take a break and we'll be right back. is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz Proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, just to finish up with the Euro, um, a new profile has appeared on the daily. Uh, and the targets are that, you know, from that 114, 67, 68, if you guys are playing around with this, um, are that POC on the weekly, which is around 112.08, if I remember correctly, and then this 112.26, new top of the box on the daily. So this is your target environment down here on the short right now initially. Um, you've ultimately got, and there's that 112.07.08 right there. You've ultimately got, Okay, okay. <laughs> You've ultimately got a POC on the weekly and an unfair on the daily new box uh, appearing below price action, which is, you know, on an intermediate scale kind of bullish. But this is the area where you want to kind of relax, take the weight off, and, you know, wait and see what happens, basically. Again, the long-term view on this is just the euro is going to ultimately go to ha hell in a handbasket. So I'm uh, going to cover a couple of the usual suspects here. The yen, uh, this long trade is off for me. You know, we talked about this. We talked about, you know, the, the levels that it had breached, uh, profile appearing above price action. And, again, I'm just not wanting to play around with this right now. There's, there's a little bit of a, you know, the dollar situation, uh, the yen's obviously being affected by that. I'm just not a huge fan of of dealing with this right now. We've had an incredible run with this currency, and I want to go back in time and show you what an incredible run looks like. If you can see this on a long-term basis, we started this, and this was back in the summer, actually the winter of 2013, 2014. And I usually don't go back and talk about things this far back, but you know, I, th I started talking to Tom and Tommy at TFNN in this time frame, and I was just like, man, I love this trade. I love the, the 101 area. I love to just, you know, 
initially have the target 105 and then you know wait for a breakout and then buy buy support buy support well guess what um this is the first time we've had something like this happen since 101 we've had a good run for about 2500 pips on this thing and now it's time to just take a back seat to that particular long trade i'm not a big fan of shorting it so it's something we're going to probably shelve for a while the Aussie is just, you know, I, I still love that trade. I mean, that's that's one of the Chinese dependency type situations. And um, Joey and I talked about that, just loading it up on the short side around, you know, the 72, 75 area. Didn't get there three days ago, but I still love this from the short side. Love it. Getting a little bit of a showing its hand situation with the Shanghai moving up, just, you know, like uh, like they're getting ready to dig more holes and sell more natural resources. Uh that's the way Australia survives, believe it or not, or refuse to believe it or not. Here's a dollar situation uh, covering a couple of the usual suspects here. You know, it's poked its head back above this 95.30. I'd like to see a weekly close to feel a lot better about this getting long, long the dollar again. Um, I'm not a big fan of shorting it. I know some other folks on the network are, but uh, I'm just... You know, I, I'm kind of in wait and see mode on this. We broke down past the last support area for me. I got stopped out of that trying to buy that dip. And uh, right now we've got 95.30 and 95.21 profile appearing, price action up in there. Uh, love to see a daily, weekly close up in that area and then be able to use 95.30 again as something we can orient stops around. But, you know, right now, just uh, I think you're wasting your time trying to buy it yet. All righty. DAX. Everything likes to see the Shanghai move up, but guess what? You got a massive lid here we talked about yesterday, 10, 395, 40. So let's just call it 10, 400 sitting here. And we just, this, this is a decent situation. This is one of the nicest little situations on the, on the board right now. Um, stops above there. You could have easily... <laughs> easily in a blink a three or four or 500 point move down in the dax and these are the ones that you know i'm not getting you over excited about this hopefully but these are the kind of trades in this type of volatility where you can kind of tighten the stop up around that 10 400 if you get stopped out be able to get back in the game lower again selling lower not selling higher and a nice drift down in this thing in a volatile market um you could make your whole month on trades like this. And I'll get into that theory in just a second after the next break. And we're going to find some stocks again, like I promised, that are showing themselves weak as the market rallied tremendously. We'll be right back, guys. of trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. 
If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And I got to tell you, there's uh, I love this time of the year around here. There's there's things on the there's, I, you know, I love to have fruits coming in all year when you when you have some land i have i just it's i don't understand people that plant ornamental trees ornamental fruit trees whatever why not plant a real fruit tree so you can actually you know nine months out of the year basically be going outside and you know eating some fresh fruit and and uh or vegetables or whatever and uh that's kind of what's going on here we got pears and apples coming in it's really 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 cool a, a fresh pear that's one of my favorite things and uh i've been eating them this morning so i'm kind of jacked up but uh you know what's really weird is is uh there's Cary, north carolina it's kind of down the road and um there's a there's a planned community that they're it's actually a nice residential community that they've you know trying to zone off but the whole premise was to have a farm directly in the middle for the community as kind of this which is basically the way every community should be, in my opinion. And there's people fighting it because they don't want to farm near them. I mean, it's just how ridiculous is that? I mean, it's it's free food. It's healthy. It's, I don't know. That's amazing. Let's take a look at the 10-year. 127.5. Um, this is, this is kind of cool the way this is working, by the way. 
127.11 bottom of the box on the coming down from above on the weekly. And then you've got that 127, 12, 13 sitting right here also on the daily. Now, this is coinciding with the U.S. stock market, you know, reaching higher and uh, possibly being able to, you know, turn around and find some new resistance areas at the same time, the 10 year uh, is coming down into some support and you know how these things act. So uh, interesting little situation. I'm looking forward to putting some bids around this area and putting stops down below and being able to get back in that trade. If I do get stopped out, uh, not a fan of Yellen and her crew ever come into the you know sense of reality with uh, the rate situation it's you know <laughs> it's laughable but uh anyway i don't think bottom line is i don't think they're going to raise rates anytime soon and if they do they do but uh you know i mean what what if you've been sitting on the on the launching pad of thought processes that they're going to raise rates every time they say it's, it's just not happening it's a broken record i you know i think the pattern's there and uh nobody's going to let her raise rates put it that way here's gold uh again you know that 1125 area i kind of wanted to see this get back down below it i'm a little bit more short-minded on gold than than long um I, you know, we talked about that fast moving area and look at how fast that moved and how fast it reversed. That 1160, 1168. If you haven't been watching the show, we've talked about this pretty religiously. That was the targets on any north trades. Um, I actually tried to short this around 1125 on the way up. Um, got stopped out, passed on the longs because I don't really feel that hunky dory about that concept. But I wanted to wait for this get back below 1125, 1127. Why? Because that was getting. You know, down into the fair auction again on the daily and the weekly. And we reached a low yesterday. We talked about targets on this initially. And I know these are short term trading concepts for you guys who are, who are investors out there. I apologize for just going through the minutia all the time. But I think, uh, you know, a lot of people watching this show, it's a good education um, to, to kind of look at some of the long term views also. But, uh, you know, gold moving around like this. Is not a bad thing. I mean, there's trading opportunities when these happen. And if, if you're at work and listen to this show right down the road or whatever, um, you know, this is this is a great thing to go back and look at the podcast or the, you know, the, the recordings of the show when you get home just to kind of, you know, see the the process of analyzing some things on a little bit shorter term basis. Here's the unfair highs, 1126, 1127, a couple without 1125. We reached a low yesterday of... 1116 let's say and that unfair low right there is 1114 1115 rounded off so got into the satisfying neighborhood that was the target on that trade and we've come back and retested that 1125 1127 area and now we're just sitting right here so the more we spin around right here and the longer we stay below this 1125 1127 area and especially get a friday close there not that good for longs and um we could just continue to drift lower and just explore this weekly auction that appeared this last week and in my opinion could get back down to the 1086 area but remember stops above 1128 based on your appetite for risk on this type of scenario Um, on gold, I was just reading some comments in the den. Yeah, it's it's utterly ridiculous that somebody would pitch a fit about a community of that nature. And they, you know, pesticides. I think they're concerned. To be honest with you, I think they're concerned about just the activity. I mean, you know, and you know, maybe spreading some manure here and there. <laughs> which, uh, if you farm, you know that that's actually not. That's a great thing, and it's not. It doesn't smell. I mean, compost of manure is, uh, you know, getting some fresh manure wet's a different story. But uh, I'll attest to that. Here we go. Uh, covered a couple of usual suspect bases, and we're going to go into the scanner. I promised you this. Uh, what we're looking at here, uh, we started out talking about this ETF concept, and we talked about the XLB, and I ranked them on the 60-minute because I wanted to see on a short-term basis what just wasn't showing 
any excitement whatsoever. And we looked at international paper. I'm going to look at this again. Uh, we're trading around 42. These are the profiles here. So I'm going to pull up international paper on my charts, IP. And anything you guys want me to look at, please throw it out there. I mean, I just kind of cover some of the things on my mind that I think might be important to start your trading day, just to be aware of where the bias and where the levels are, in my opinion. Um, and you might want to put some kind of exclamation in the room when you do that because I'll, I'll miss it sometimes. I'm getting old. My eyes are bad. I got one foot in the grave. Here we go. IP, international paper. So 41.65, believe it or not, we're going to have to wait and see how this opens. But, you know, the reason I was looking at it hardcore was, you know, we had that huge rally. I know we came off the floor a little bit here, but these profiles are well above. And on the 240, if we can get back down below 41.65 um, on the 240s, I'm going to feel a lot better about this. Uh, this is one that, again, we're trying to find things that are showing their hand. I mean, when you look at this and you look at the action, this is more of a spinning type consolidation to possibly move lower. I think the market is going to give some new, at some point, some new bearish signals right now. Obviously, we're gapping up and we could have a little bit more follow through. Um, but keep your eyes on the notes and, and those levels and uh, keep your eye on some market turns south because you want to be short stocks that are showing their hand all right so we're going to go back into the xlb we're going to just look around here we're going to try to find some situations and what i want to do is let's just let's just uh let's let's do this now what we're going to we're going to show stocks that are trading below the box on the 60 and we're going to try to find stocks that are sitting right around those inflection points ip was one Martin, Mar 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 eh, Martin Marietta was another one. Let's look at MLM. MLM. And uh, obviously a break with the market. I want you to look at this and see how, how this is stock that's not that weak, I'll tell you right now. But as the market broke, we had this profile appear this week. Guess what? Hit those targets at 145.09, almost to the tick. Got a little bit farther south, 143 and some change. But uh, we're right in the middle of a long-term fair auction. I don't like this as a long-term short, by the way, at all. Um, we've got a little bit of a turnaround here. We've got a new box attempting to appear, which is indicated right there with that yellow peel back. We're in the fair auction there. Um, even though it says bottom there and we didn't really you know, rally tremendously yesterday, um, here's the 60-minute. This is why I picked this up. Showing its hand is... You know, this didn't really, you know, do the dance on the way up with the rest of the market, as you can see. And this is why the scanner flagged it. But as I look across this and as I look at the signals on the stock in general, you know, I think you've got better shorts out there in the short term. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it showed its hand yesterday. Maybe it's, um, you know, very short term, relatively weak. But the long term signals, I don't like to trade against the long term trend. And those two things alone being, you know, in this mode, bouncing heavily off those unfair lows already, being in the middle of the fair auction on the long term, and then this yellow bar showing, which means we're going to have probably a new profile here, a new demand area, which is going to be a new supportive action. Not a fan of shorting this because you got better shorts out there. I'm going to read that later. That looks looks funny. Um, all right, let's take a look at something else. Let's take a look at uh, CF Holdings, and let's also take a look at Ball Corp, BLL. And I know these are just completely boring for you guys to look at, but remember, sometimes boring is good, especially right now. All right, so pre-market, it looks like we are – Opening up about 64.10 on this. I like this situation right here. Showed its hand early, broke down, been spinning down here. Had a massive haircut on this thing. And we've got this profile appearing above and on the daily, and that's cool. And we're sitting right here. So you got two situations on this. You got getting below 62.80. I think you could step on the gas pedal a little bit. Um, and that's kind of a waiting game. Sorry about that. 
And you've also got some long-term, in my opinion, shorts that could, could be pulled off on this with stops above 66.82. All right, so I think we've got two little neat little situations on that. Let's take a look at Netflix. I mean, let's take a look at a couple of bellwethers because we had some, for guys who are looking for the crack, uh, let's see, pre-market, is this correct? 113.50, yeah. All right, so the cool thing is with Netflix, I want you to look at this, 85.93, just last, Custer's last stance on support on the weekly on this, and my God, that <laughs> what is that, a 20, well, pre-market, we got a 20, almost a 30-point move from those unfair lows in one week. That's the definition of a strong stock. There are people waiting to buy this. There are people standing in line to buy it. But right now, pre-market, you've got a, a resistance area, a new profile that happened yesterday sitting at 114.37. This is, this is kind of nice for day traders. We're trading 113.41. We're almost there. And you can pick a little bit of a battle there on a, on a contra trade against a long-term trade north on this. And this is actually all in the scanner also. So I go back to the dashboard. I'm going to go back to my S&Ps. And I'm going to keep my eyes on these speed dials up here. Pre-market, again, these aren't completely populated yet. Uh, I'm going to type in, well, I'm just going to find Netflix. How about that? Here we go. As you can see, these profiles are, are newly appearing here. So we're going to have to wait just a second. Let me see here. Yeah, this is going to populate on the scanner in just a second. Damn it. Let me, let me just check that again. Sorry, guys. A little bit of a brain fart here. Where is Netflix? There it is. No, it's it's populated. Sorry about that. I was, I was looking at the wrong uh, level. 114.37. There it is. And... Uh, there's that 114.37. I don't my my fault on that one. And uh, pre-market, uh, this is actually live. This is always live, by the way. The level of the market. So yesterday's close was, I guess, around there, and we're showing pre-market level of the market there. Sometimes I confuse myself even. Uh, here we go. Let's take a look at Apple. Uh, again, Apple new profile yesterday. Here's the long term. It's been a nice little situation to continue to sell resistance below that 124.70 area. And here's a new profile appearing yesterday. So now you've got if if Apple rallies, you got a killer area up top 117.65. And on a daily, you know, we're just in the middle of this profile bouncing around. You got to look a little deeper into some shorter term situations. You want to wait for this to get below 109.80 to start shorting this on a short term now. And then your targets below, believe it or not, are the 240 unfair lows at 103 and the dailies at 102 and some change. Okay. We'll be right back, guys. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I saw a comment in there. <laughs> I know it wasn't pertaining to what I'm getting ready to talk to you about, uh, about the walking dead. And believe it or not, in my hometown, uh, Wilson, North Carolina, they are filming the walking dead this year. They, there's a mall there or, and it's a, you know, just like all these enclosed malls, that's not the thing to do these days. This was built back in the seventies. The walking dead show has come in. And read, you can read about this. Type in Wilson and uh, Parkwood Mall, small little sleepy town in North Carolina, have come come about. I think the population now is about 50,000, 50, maybe tops. They've come in. They've bought the entire mall, and they're going to film The Walking Dead this year in that mall. Like the whole season's going to be filmed there. It's amazing. It's incredible. Look it up. True story. Walking Dead. All right, let's kind of recover what we're going to talk about here before the market open. We've got about three minutes. Uh, the dollar has spiked, and we've gotten, you know, 
it's not significantly above that 95 30 area but uh this is pretty cool because you know for longs because you know if we can get a, a daily close and then a weekly close it's going to kind of put a stake in the ground that that 95 27 95 30 which is the daily inflows and weekly inflows have been surpassed and there's been a stake in the ground above that area and now you and then you could lean on that um again you know stepping backwards Obviously, we've been just turning around the U.S. dollar here, but uh, again, I like to have areas of concern, inflection points to lean on to try to figure out where I need to put stops, and that's possibly one of them. Here's the S&Ps. They've obviously got a nice bump off of that news, um, and we talked about waiting patiently until we got back below 194. This is a great, great example of things on their highs aren't too high. I mean, you know, or things on the lows aren't too low. You want to get confirmation. You want to have something, some sanity area to try to, you know, configure stops around. That's the first thing you should always think about is how do I play defense instead of playing offense? Short-term guys, again, 90, you know, that, it, you know, we kind of came down and met that 48, 49 area that we just have been speaking of, the 240 and 60-minute situations. Here's 1964.50 up top. We've already met that 1963.75. So, you know, you got to watch out for this. I think you need to just really wait patiently until we get back below that 1948, 1949 area to think about the short side. Or we're going to have to move higher and grab some new inflection points that the scanner will let you know, in my opinion, on the 240. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of just shorting this thing blindly. That's how you might get in trouble. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, profile appearing well above this on the uh, on the long term. That's that's bearish in in theory. There, again, you know, there's nothing to hang on to here. You can short this. You got to just have some discipline. Um, and on the two, on the sixty minute. Here's the situation, somewhat similar to the S&Ps. You'd like to see this thing get below 42, 46 at least to start looking at this from the short side. And uh, again, the, the 240s are even lower. So you're, it might not be the day we're going to do a lot of turnaround here. I mean, the Shanghai did recover a little bit. The market's going to factor in so-called good news. So be prepared for that. Guys, I want you to stay tuned to TFNN. Larry's next. Tom, David, Steve Rhodes, Basil, stay tuned. Listen to these guys. Watch out for that TV. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.